Adventure Sports HQ, professional grade laser tag equipment. So, in going into a wireless based sensor, multiple competitors have those. And let's talk about the fundamental issues of why we at Adventure Sports HQ don't prefer them. Secondly, when we're talking about that, we'll talk about the battery life. But the reason we really don't enjoy wireless head sensors is because of a couple things. They have a separate battery. Now, if you're running 10 to 20, which most of our competitors have smaller fields, fine, you can manage that. But when you start getting into the size of the fields that Adventure Sports has, if you look at all the big fields out there, 90% of them are going to be using Adventure Sports gear because we're the tried and true and we're the benchmark for the system. You know, you can go look at PV Explosion. You can look at uh, several sites in Wisconsin. You can go to D2 Tactical. You can go to Battlefield Houston. And you're going to see these larger venues are all using wired head sensors because they want to be able to move in and out and issue gear quickly. With a wireless head sensor, minutes equal money. And I don't have time to charge all my head sensors in between events. Some wireless head sensors have battery lives as short as two hours, some claim to be 10 hours. Well, that's great. But the bottom line is, is when you're running 30, 40, 50, 60 pieces of gear, you do not have time to charge in between events. You need a head sensor that is not gonna be something that's part of your maintenance plan. Plug it in and play. That's what Adventure Sports is all about. People don't care whether they have a wireless head sensor or not. They might say it's cool for a minute, but what I'll tell you is that people will care when their head sensor's battery dies. People will care when they can't be hit or their head sensor becomes unpaired. They'll more than care. What's gonna happen is mom's gonna ask you those three words, give me discount, okay? Why? Because it wasn't a perfect event. Why mess with something that doesn't need to be fixed? Now, you might say, hey, he's hard selling me on this. No, we've run over 10,000 events. We have the US Air Force Academy. We work with the Army Weapons Testing Center, the British Ministry of Defense, David Copperfield, numerous government agencies and over 2,000 fields. If the Army doesn't care that it has a coil, the kids are not going to care. But what you're gonna care about is when you're using a wireless head sensor that is not sealed. What sealed means is that it's not sealed as a sensor. Most of our competitors that have a wireless-based system have an open sensor that's not potted or closed off or airtight. What's this mean? I don't know about you, but ask yourself this question. Are you in an area that has rain? Are you in an area that has wire, uh, humidity? Because if you are, then you are gonna be subject to humidity. Now, I don't know about you, but if it's freshly rained, I get steamy, my glasses get steamy, and then guess what? Your head sensors are gonna be steamy. Why is that important to you? If your sensors are not sealed and you get moisture in them, A, you're going to get corrosion in your sensors because they use tin, all right? B, you're gonna get the water going all around, possibly shorting out your head sensor. Water is bad. So if it's not a sealed head sensor, watch out. Secondly, as we talked, external battery life. If you have to charge your batteries, like I said before, three to four times just to make it through a weekend, you're losing money. Last thing is that when you have head sensors that are wireless, they have to be paired. What pairing means is stopping, activating a tagger, going to a special screen on each individual tagger, going through and pairing it up using a software system, it doesn't matter. When that tagger goes down or it gets separated from its tagger too far, it will drop. And when it drops, you have to possibly reset your game. But wireless head sensors also have the ability where if some players want to mess with you, they just take the head sensors and swap and they go play, causing you issues. Don't buy a system that has got built-in issues that you are going to experience. Minutes equal money and keeping it simple stupid is the way to go. With our gear, if it's an under 10 player, you don't need a head sensor. If you're going outdoors and you're under 10, you don't need a sensor because our sensors actually work and they're high quality and they have long range. If you're going to be with adults and you want a professional base setting that is just really high intense, Call of Duty style, then use the head sensors, but you're going to be able to hit. So in closing on this video, realize the sensors are just as important as the tagger. Don't get caught into the wow. Don't be one of those people that are going to buy a system because it has wireless sensors. Are you good and are you technical? Ask yourself, are you the person that struggles pairing their phone with their headset? Imagine doing that with 50 to 60 pieces of gear under pressure, using minimal staff, one to two people to run an event, and you're in the middle of an event and a kid's tagger goes down. Do you have time to walk all the way across the tagger and fix that? No. Wireless 
it is great, it's got a lot of foo factor, but the bottom line is you don't need it for what we do. Once again, this is Derek with Adventure Sports HQ. Remember, we just unpack and play. Feel free to check out and stay tuned to the other videos. We thank you for your time and we'll see you next video.